When Amanda Stewart and her son Ezekiel accidentally drive into a flooded downtown street, they never imagined what could happen next. Incredibly, in a matter of seconds, they find themselves on the verge of drowning. As Amanda's SUV sinks in the flooded street, the car's electrical system is shorted out. The doors are locked and the windows can't be lowered. Amanda and Ezekiel are trapped in the back of their car. Good Samaritan Thomas Hudson swims out to the car, but he can't break the reinforced back windows. It was scary, because I just knew that we was going to die because I didn't feel like nobody was going to make it in time. I just thought we was going to die because the water had already came up to our mouth and the truck was all the way down. Firefighters soon enter the water and rush to help. Uh, me and another firefighter, Jeremy Barber, we uh, went into the water. Um, we had one ax. We both went in. We both had uh, our, our life vests on and helmet on. Uh, went in, made it to the vehicle, and were able to um, get on the back bumper of the SUV. I was kept trying to kick the glass with my foot, and I couldn't do it, and I was beating it with my hand. And I guess that's when the, 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 the fireman seen me beating, it, beating the glass we was under the water, and I was beating it. And that's when I heard it, 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 the, the, the glass shattered. After breaking the back window with an ax, the firemen first pull out Ezekiel. The way it went down is the, 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 young, the young boy came out first. He was conscious, alert, he, you know, he had real big eyes. He was you know, taking, taking some breaths of air. And Jeremy was able to take him and started heading back to shore where Captain Springer met him halfway. Meanwhile, Jacob Lear Sadowski pulls out Amanda from the car. She has swallowed a good bit of water. And before I know it, they was pulling my leg out and they pulled me up on my legs. And then he grabbed me out, I was out and he was squeezing my stomach as he was taking me out, walking me out. And I guess I came through and threw up some of the water and it was just scary. So there's a flash flood. What do you do? Unless there's an emergency and you need to go driving, stay home where it's safe. If you must drive, don't try to drive through puddles, especially at night. It might be deeper than you realize. Perhaps the best way to prepare for flash floods is to have knowledge of what areas are most susceptible to flooding. Fortunately, this incident ends with no one getting hurt, and there is plenty of thanks to go around. To Thomas Hudson, who didn't hesitate to provide help, and was there to alert the firefighters that people were still in the sinking car. It's my belief that if you are in a position to help someone, you should extend a hand. I did what I should have done, and I would hope that anybody else would do that in the same situation. At some point, I'm going to be in that situation, and someone better come save me, so that's why I do it. <laughs> Thanks to Fireman Jacob Lear Sadowski, who on a daily basis is ready to help. We have a lot of areas in Little Rock that do flash flood uh, pretty well. Um, and there's always usually someone that will drive into the water and need to be rescued. Um, a lot of the guys that have been on the job a lot longer have said they've never seen anything like that. Um, but they have, you know, we do, we do make quite a few water rescues. And for Amanda Stewart, she's just thankful that her prayers were answered that night. I felt that we were blessed. Because the whole time we was in that truck and before the water even got up to my knees, I was saying, Lord, please don't let us die. Just help us. Help us, Lord. My son just 12 years old. Lord, please don't let me lose my son. I said, he's all I got. Don't let me lose my son.